Kelly Nee here with Eyes on the Game at Sanford MMA being joined by the one and only Mr. Michael Chandler. Now you are headlining at UFC 262 in Houston for that lightweight title. You always say see you at the top, but look, it doesn't get much higher than this. It doesn't. You know, it's uh, I just got word. I'm pretty sure the, th the thing sold out in less than 10 minutes, so it's exciting, man. I, I just think it's a testament to uh, the the action hungry MMA starved fans over the last year not being able to go to live events um, that these shows are selling out, selling out so quickly. Um, they just added Diaz versus Edwards. You got Shane Burgos versus Edson Barboza. Shane Burgos is my favorite fighter on the roster to watch. Um, and then you got Tony Ferguson, Benil Dariush. Been just a, a huge card top to bottom. It's an honor. It's a blessing to be uh, at the top of the bill at the main event and fighting for UFC gold. And yeah, when I said see you at the top, I meant it. Looking at Charles Oliveira, though, do you think that his skill set presents the biggest challenge for you in comparison to some of the other guys at the top of the lightweight division? Um, I don't think so. I think you look at a guy like Dustin Poirier is extremely technical on the feet, very well versed on the ground, and he's got an indomitable spirit. You look at a guy like Connor, um, you know, obviously he got finished last fight, but he didn't quit. Um, you look at a guy like Justin Gaethje, indomitable spirit, very, not very great on the ground, but just a ridiculous striker, a ridiculous savage on the feet. You look at Charles Oliveira, I think he's, he's pretty good on the feet, and he's extremely good on the ground, um, athleticism-wise, Speed, power, uh, speed, and power-wise, um, not at the, at the top of the list in, in the division. Um, and he's also has a tendency to start fast and then start to fade. So I mean, you're going to see me coming out, getting get his face right away. And I think that breaking of Charles Oliveira should happen midway through. Uh, the first round at the end of the first round and then finish him in the second. A lot of your fans, I mean, we all saw your UFC debut back in Abu Dhabi. So many fans were so impressed. Are you surprised that, you know, in your career, that your second fight in the UFC, you're headlining? And like you mentioned, the Nate Diaz, that's the co-main event, the Tony Ferguson, they're all on the card, on your card. You know, I, uh, I stopped putting limits on God's purpose on my life and God's calling on my life a long time ago because they're, they're you know, they're, the old Michael Chandler, the, the small guy from the small town who was taught to do small things would say, man, that would never happen. But, you know, w with the way that my life has happened and the way that God has kept me in the palm of his hand uh, my entire career, I... I, I Humbly, I say I'm not surprised. You know, I knew I was going to come into the organization, not just come into the party. I wanted to kick down the door to the party and be the, be the, the most popular guy there. Um, and that's what I was going to try to do from, from day one. And that's what I've done thus far. Knocking out Dan Hooker, doing in two and a half minutes what Dustin Poirier couldn't do in 25 minutes, what Paul Felder couldn't do in 25 minutes. I think that says something in the lightweight division. The greatest of all time thus far, Khabib Nurmagomedov, retiring, opens the door to, an, to a crazy big, uh, exciting, lightweight division that I can easily put my name at the top of and then start defending that belt. So I'm not surprised, um, but I'm extremely humbled. Well, speaking of belts, Conor McGregor recently tweeted that he wants a Conor McGregor belt being made and going into that trilogy fight against Dustin Poirier. What do you make of that? I love it, man. It's Conor being Conor. Listen, I mean, you can say what you want about Conor, but man, the, the dude's the biggest combat sports icon on the planet. Yeah. Um, n not just right now, but he has been for a while and he will be for, for the foreseeable future. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I think it's kind of a cool idea and I love the prospect of him beating Dustin Poirier and me fighting him, me putting my belt on the line, you know, November, December, him putting the Conor McGregor belt on the line, November, December. I'd love a, a, a Paddock Rare belt or whatever he said sitting on my mantle, you know, to add to my collection. Election, but um, I want to I want to share the octagon with Conor McGregor sooner or later, uh, eventually before I retire. So we'll see if it happens after I beat Charles Oliveira or before or or, or not before. But um, how many fights it'll take, we'll see. So you think he beats Dustin? I think Conor is notorious, for lack of a better word, notorious for. Um, making really great adjustments, really uh, tweaks to his game plan, tweaks to his approach to the game. I think there's not uh, many more bright minds uh, in the sport than Conor McGregor. I think he's, he's, he's got some of the highest fight IQ in the lightweight division for sure. And I think there's just a couple little tweaks that he, all he has to make to his game that he, uh, he goes out there and uh, I think beats Poirier. I mean, the other thing about Poirier, Poirier had nothing to lose in the last fight. You know, he had nothing to lose. Now he's got kind of something to lose. Um, 
I really think Poirier has a lot to lose because now he had the opportunity to probably fight me or Charles for the title, and he said no, he wanted to fight Connor. So you pass up on a title fight to fight Connor. There's a lot of pressure that goes along with making that decision. So we'll see how it plays out. But I think Connor, I think Connor makes some adjustments and at least looks a lot better in this next fight. I'm not saying he's going to get the win, but he's he's in a better position now than he was uh, back in January when they fought the first time. And lastly, what would you like to tell all your fans who can't wait to watch whether they're in attendance in Houston or ordering the pay-per-view? Just excited. I, you know, I'm excited and humbled to, to headline UFC 262. Uh, 20,000 fans, ravaging fans are, gonna, are going to uh, descend upon the Toyota Center. It's going to be a blast. Every single fight on this card is going to be a banger. It's going to be fast-paced. It's going to be exciting and entertaining. You will be on the edge of your seat. Buy that pay-per-view or come out to Houston, and I'll see you at the top.